welcome biologists. This session where we're going to be taking a look at kidney failure and also its possible treatments. Now normally with this kind of question what they do is present you with some data in the exam of um, normal urine output, what you normally find in urine uh, or what you normally find in the glomerular filtrate uh, and comparing that to some abnormalities uh, and then you'd have to comment on what might have happened and possible treatments for that. So um, for example here is a table showing you the normal um, composition of blood plasma, um, filtrate, urine and what I've done here is I've just put in a pink box, um, specifically their glucose and amino acids, because they're the most popular ones that they do decide to change there within the urine composition. Like if you spot anything within the plasma or the, it's usually the, the filtrate or the urine composition that's different to what it should be. And you know what they should be based upon um, selective reabsorption um, and also um, ultrafiltration from previous videos you know what they should be so if any of these appear to be abnormal that's when you can say well for example the basement membrane's damaged or this person might have high blood pressure or whatever it is but it could also link into kidney failure and um, kidney failure can be treated using three different things and for each one you do need to know um, a, roughly a little bit about how they work, uh, advantages and disadvantages. So the first one is hemodialysis and this is where the blood is taken out of normally a, a vein um, or and it's pumped into a machine whereby the blood is passed over um, a, a fluid membrane, a membrane where it's got fluid on the other side and um, the fluid is the correct composition of solutes that should be in the blood. So therefore anything in a high concentration in the blood will diffuse into the filtrate and be removed into the, that membrane, into membrane fluid. And anything in the fluid that is in a high concentration that needs to be in the blood or vice versa will it diffuse into the blood. Um, so the key things here is that um, we have to have something called heparin, which stops blood clots. Heparin is a um, drug that they give to the patient and it stops blood clotting because we do not want the blood to clot within our machine. It will just stop the whole thing. And plus, we don't want blood clots going back in uh, to the individual because that can cause damages to the individual. Also, uh, before the blood is re-entered in, into the body we have to remove air bubbles in this process as well so um this has some advantages in that obviously the blood can be cleansed it can be done at home this but it is a, a fairly regular occurrence you have to do it every few days uh, so it does have its disadvantages as well it, it does hinder upon um life experiences for example work or family life as well um but at least they can you know it, they can still clean out their blood that, that the, like the kidneys would do yeah so three times a week for a few hours so it comes out from the vein pass through small tubes made from a partially permeable membrane on the outside of the membrane the dialysis fluid flows in the opposite direction and we use water potential to change the water concentration of our blood and also um, have the correct glucose concentration in there the next one is peritoneal dialysis and this is where they use the natural membrane that's in our abdominal cavity as you can see this image here and in this one the dialysis solution is actually pumped into the individual's abdominal cavity and the it's very similar to the other dialysis in terms of um, there'll be an exchange of sol solutes and water and ions across the membrane and the uh, blood inside of the intestines here but the key thing here is that um it can be you can you know, you can do this relatively easily. It's a slightly more easier. Dialysis fluid can be left in there, so you can go about your day-to-day -day business and then carry on. It can you do need to do it several times a day though, but you can complete your home or work, which is the advantage. Now, if you have complete kidney failure, ideally you need a kidney transplant. However, the kidney transplant you have to be using immunosuppressants because that new kidney is not going to be recognised as itself because antigens present on that kidney are not their own and therefore it can cause rejections and that's the biggest disadvantage for having a kidney transplant however it can prolong your life um, and it can uh, result in no longer needing dialysis which is obviously ideal um, so there we have it those are the different types of potential treatments for kidney failure and what to look out for in your exam anything in a red box is taken directly from the mark scheme good luck